Nick Saban of Alabama keeps telling the truth. You don't want to hear about it. But he says when it comes to super conferences and mega conferences, this is what's going to happen whether you like it or not. You know, there's a lot of tradition, you know, in conferences um, that will no longer exist. Uh, and I think we've g- gone through that to some degree in the past. Uh, you know, the Oklahoma-Nebraska game used to be a big game, and they've not been in the same conference for quite some time now and quit playing each other. So um, that, that that's something. But I think we're going to deal with it in, you know, a greater capacity than ever before um, because I think mega conferences are probably here to stay. And, you know, market share, market, you know, there's there's a lot of that involved in why are we doing what we're doing. He and Jay, plenty of the old heads don't want to hear that. Mm-hmm. But it's the truth, and you get better get used to it, whether you like it or not. Well, I don't know why the old heads wouldn't want to hear it. Because of tradition, is, like he change said. Change is going to always happen, though. Tradition is, is one thing. Your school, your university is still going to be able to have their tradition. USC, although they're going to the Big Ten, is still going to play Notre Dame every year and UCLA. I mean, it, it's still going to happen from a traditional standpoint. But the Pac-12 used to be the Pac-8 once upon a time. You know what I'm saying? The Big 8 was another conference, and it became the Big 12. You know, the Big Ten eventually got Nebraska in there. So it's it, – it, and Penn State. And so it's going to change. I mean, that's just the reality of it. When you look at the mega conferences that is 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 coming about the super conference, whatever you want to call it, it's good for college football. No question about it. It's gonna be good for college sports all the way around. Because everybody, in my opinion, that deserve to get a fair shot will get a fair shot. You see, I I, I love it. I wanna see more of these matchups. I, I I want that USC Ohio State matchup. Like I wanna be at that game. I wanna see what that's like in the new age Big Ten. Um, I wanna see more of those kind of non-traditional rivalries that get a chance to become the new rivalries into the future mm-hmm. uh, for a lot of those matchups. And But I will tell you this, Freddie. Uh, you know, if we get into this Power 2 or the Big 2 type conferences, the turnover rate for head coaches, get Oof. ready. Oof. Get ready. Because Oof. if you're not competing, at, I mean, a guy like Nick Saban, mm-hmm. he'll be fine. Yep. Uh, but some of these smaller schools, as they try to continue to edge their way up towards the top, uh, it, it's going to be very challenging for their retention rate to remain long term for coaches because schools want to compete and uh, you need players to compete, especially with the way this new landscape is being formed out. You can go get players from all across the country now. Doesn't matter. We're in one pot. So let's play and let's see who wins. Nick Saban said it best. He said, I'm part of the haves and I'm telling the truth because he is. Because I wanted the conversation. I don't want to. I know the conversation would not be the same if Nick Saban was coaching at McNeese State or North Dakota State. Because those have-nots will have to deal with the new mega conferences. Because it's going to be tough to schedule teams now. If I know if I'm a team in a big conference and a mega conference, why am I scheduling a team in a lower division or a team that's a division one, not in a mega conference? How's that benefiting me? Because it's not, especially when the playoff is going to go to eight teams, Key and Jay, where you're going to be more concerned about RPI playing teams in mega conferences and not scheduling those have-not schools. That's where that effect is going to happen. That's why so many people are hot and bothered about Nick Saban telling the truth. Well, I think most of the schools, though, that are the mega conferences will have their preseason games still. They'll still play the North Texas States. They'll still have one or two of those on their resume because the last thing you need to do is every single week for 13 weeks or whatever the the amount of games is going to be in a regular season is to get knocked around on a consistent basis in your conference when your conference is already so deep. You want to be able to give your team whatever you want to call it, a second buy, a third buy. So, again, even though USC is going to the Big Ten, they still going to schedule an Oregon State. They're still going to schedule one of those schools just because they have to. You cannot play 12, 13 straight games against that type of competition at the highest level and expect to not get knocked off. It just, you know – it, it, it can't happen. There's yeah, but, no way. But, but, Key, you can look at it and say, if the strength of my conference is so next level, mm-hmm. I have to make sure well, – look, we get this game. I have to pad my stats, man. Mm-hmm. I got to make sure we got a couple of wins coming into this thing. So it, it, it does take away 
from like the yeah, tra- that's why Jay they gonna schedule them smaller schools so they yes. can get them couple wins. Of course, they that's what. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If you're not in the Power Two conference and you're kind of a big dog in another conference, you're not going to get that same opportunity to play against the bigger yep. dogs of the power conferences. That's right. the challenge. Yeah, Here's another challenge that has to be thought about. When do they increase scholarship limitations? Because if you're going to have all these power conferences, the scholarship limitation is going to go up, in my opinion. That's going to go from 85 to possibly 95 in terms of that, with that yeah, money you, out there. When you start getting to the 95th guy or the 86th guy, they don't play anyway, but yeah, of course, it gives them an opportunity to get a free education. Um, and you know, I don't think the scholarship, I don't think there's limitations on it at all because there's all sorts of ways to navigate around scholarships. Yeah, Freddie, I'll say this: mm-hmm. scholarships ain't enough. I mean, these players really—if we're, if we're going towards a power two conference, the players really need to understand their worth and start talking about formulating a union. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.